Hi, everyone. Welcome to the September Circulation SIG, where we talk about everything related to Koha circulation. Hopefully, you have problems to discuss, pleasant surprises that you've come in contact with, um, so that you can share with us all the fun things. So, um, how is everyone doing? Anything to report on the upgrades? Have they? Has anyone is has anyone upgraded to 2405 yet? No? Okay, it's coming. Chip looks like Chip has. Oh Chip. Yeah. yeah. We we were an early adopter, so uh yeah. What we're do we there. need to look forward to? Oh <laughs> um pay, allowing patrons to renew their own items um whenever they want. So uh Previously, we only had uh, automatic renewals set up. So, uh, anyway, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to remember the other things, but um, yeah, just general general improvements or a lot of little things. Okay. In there, yeah. Um, I was I was able to set up the. Uh, a notice that lets people know when we're canceling their holds when they expire, which we were nervous about doing before this upgrade. And I forget why. <laughs> um, I have a question. I, this is, we only recently went on Koha, so this will be my first upgrade. Okay. And supposedly it's supposed to be towards the end of September and we're now almost halfway through September and I haven't heard anything what i mean do you usually get some sort of forewarning of the exact date yeah they'll usually put a notice in your news section with a big red border on it um with the exact date uh it's gonna happen it's the last communication they sent sounded like they didn't really have the schedule totally solidified yet um but you should see that coming within the next week or two Okay. And that's for Bywater customers, right? Correct. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Just to clarify, I'm not, I'm unsupported. So other unsupported people, you can upgrade whenever you want. And yeah, mm -hmm. like Rebecca said, you can also just open a ticket and they'll, they should be able to give you an exact date. Um, but they'll, they'll send you a little warning via the, the news as well. Ooh. All right. Are there any other uh, any issues or problems people are having? I don't have a, a an issue so much as I'm curious to see if anyone is using patron clubs. Jason, you guys are. Oh yeah, I have like six hundred clubs. Oh my gosh. So um, we use them for our automatic reserves which aren't all that automatic, um, but we use them, we we use them as author clubs. So like for, if there's a new James Patterson book coming out, people can subscribe to James Patterson. And then we just monitor a report and anytime a new title gets put in, we'll put on the, the club hold for everybody in the club and it saves a lot of staff time and gets more holds moving for us. So yeah, um, I did do a presentation on it as well. There. It's clunky. There are places it can be improved, but it, it's definitely saved a lot of staff time for us. And saves staff time just in terms of you can put holds for everyone all at once. Yeah. So like for the Patterson Club, we've got over 100 people and it's just one click instead of uh, a bunch of clicks. <laughs> um, okay. Because and before like the staff were doing that themselves. So whichever library got there first got to put their holds at the top of the list. And with the club holds, it randomizes. So every time it, you add the holds, it's a diff different person is getting to the top of the list. We, we wanted that to be more fair. Okay. So there's not really a way to like get the book club to the top unless you manually do that. Right. So you've got to you've got to place the hold before somebody else gets to it, right. <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, 
but it, the more buy-in we got from our libraries, the the smoother it went. Like I I don't have hardly any libraries that are placing their own holds now. It, it's all coming through the club club holds. Okay. Anyone else using book clubs? When you say it's clunky, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> so the clunky parts are enrolling. Um, right now you have to enroll individually. So and it's two clicks for some reason. So you click enroll and then and it loads enrollment. another button that's finish enrollment. Yeah. That's okay. frustrating. Um, there's a bug out there too that's in support of batch enrollments, but the, it hasn't really gone anywhere. The other thing is the the reporting and the monitoring. So it's only as good as our um, our records are basically. And my reports are like massively convoluted because <laughs> I have to like trim out commas and periods and stuff so that I can connect the club to the author and the record correctly. Um, and there's just some holes in there. And the third thing is like, it's not automatic. Like I would want it to be automatic. You have to still watch it, monitor it, and somebody has to click the button to place the holds. Um, we had discussed having our libraries do it, uh, but I had some issues with that. <laughs> so I ended up having to like, uh, Hide the ability for our libraries to do it, and we're just doing it centrally here. So yeah, somebody kept putting on club holds. It, it would it was bad. It was a mess. <laughs> they thought they were searching patrons, but they were searching clubs. So they kept putting on like a bunch of holds on things that shouldn't have had the club holds put on. Oh. Um. I, mean, I had one question that I totally lost. If I think about it, I'll. Back in. Oh, it had to do with enrollment. Like you don't, you don't have to put questions on the form, right? Like you can just enroll people. With the... <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I. <laughs> we've just got it set up. Um, plain. So like, we didn't add any extra additional fields. It's just the author name. And then they just have to click enroll, finish enrollment. And we do have patron initiated enrollment turned on too. And we encourage that having them do it themselves. They can shop for their favorite authors that way. Um, no. Yeah. So it, it works well enough, but there could be some improvements just, for sure. So, okay. Thanks. I don't know. It's weird. At first, I thought maybe that things that we They're not on the table. Anybody have yeah. something else they I want to discuss? Stuff. I didn't look through the, through the DVD. Yeah. Well, I thought for sure maybe that they would have been on the No, they're not. Um, I didn't look for the DVDs because too many on that book. I looked for the fiction and they're not on there. Does anybody have? Okay, well, I'll have I have a problem that I I did send over the listserv, but I'm not getting with a library until Friday. So I'll see if I get more answers in case I need them. Um, I have a library who, when they check in a book, they get a 500 error, which is really weird. Um. We thought it was all of them, and I have not heard back if she's tried different records um, because someone mentioned that it could be a bad record, and that's what's called that was checked out and is checked in, and that's what's causing the problem, which that totally makes sense. So <laughs> they were going to do that, and I haven't heard. Is there anything else that could be causing that 500 error? That was just new to me. I've never seen that happen before. Um, and I'm interested to know if others have encountered that problem. And how frequently, like, are we going to expect this a lot? Um, they did upgrade. And so it became, it, it, 
we wondered if it was connected to the upgrade. But um, they upgraded. Pretty sure they didn't start on 1805. I think they started on like 17 something. And then when they upgraded that, it happened. And I'm like, well, maybe it's that version. And they just upgraded to 23 of no 2311 but searching is fine adding records is fine and they haven't done a lot of circulation it's been a, a new librarian and they've been able to it's a small it's a small library so circulation is not that big of a deal but she would like for it to handle it so it can send out email notices and she doesn't have to remind people. Um, so it's just that one specific record though, right? I don't where know. Up, okay. I, we run into it occasionally where we get a junk record and it usually comes from like um, a, a vendor file or something. But that, that would be my first guess too. And it, it could be that when you upgraded... It was working before the upgrade, but not after the upgrade because something in the XSLT changed. So it's trying to pull something from that record it didn't do before. Um, and that's why it's broken. But yeah, my my first thought would be to you you could like try and pull that record out into mark edit and validate it and see if if you get any errors there. Um, if you've got the bib number. Or just um I don't know. Can you get in to edit the record? Because usually I, I have problems with that too when I'm getting errors. I don't I don't know. It's a local instance. <laughs> and so I don't have access to it. And I'm having oh, to do everything via Zoom and having her. I did wonder about what if I just have her if we if if fixing that rec just making a new record and copying all the information, if that works, if it would be worth let's just export your entire library <laughs> and let me run it through mark edit and see if some validation errors occurred throughout your history like they haven't been on it that long but i know they're not going to know what to clean up when they import through a z3950 and sometimes those will do weird things yeah that's i mean that's where i'd start is uh checking the mark on it uh, okay. and if you can just bring in a new record that's clean and move the item over if they let you that that works too okay. thank you very much does anyone else have coha problems they would like to discuss yes yeah, i have a question we um, are in Texas, ILL got a whole new system. Um, and so we are sending out books, I think for the first time in a long time. Um, and the system is automatically denying them a renewal and we want to go ahead and automatically allow them to renew. So would it be possible? Can I share my screen and just get y'all's advice on if I'm doing it right, uh, behind the scenes? Okay. Everybody here with me? So I've got library staff. There's the the share it thing. So we have the ILL patron. Um, we use them as an ILL patron. And then when we when we give our stuff out, we're putting it under this patron um, on our end. So when they ask for when their book is due, it the renewal automatically gets denied. I think I messed up by changing the ILL item type. That is for books that we receive. And when we put them in our catalog, we make them ILL item type. I changed that to two renewals and yes to automatic renewals. But I'm correct in thinking that I need to undo that because we don't want to automatically renew outside libraries. We want to automatically re renew our books for folks. So would I change my library staff one to renewal allowed and automatic renewal to yes. Yes, I'm right. I think so. Okay, 
I'm going to go ahead and do it and see what I mess up. Thank you. So hot is a lot of, I'm going to do it and see if I mess up. Oh, great. It works. That's <laughs> Most of the stuff you can do that. That's why I don't want access to the back end because I don't think <laughs> you, I don't think the same thing applies <laughs> there that it does to the front end. Though I think some of the system preferences you might be able to accidentally. <laughs> yeah, you can, I messed stuff up, but messed up I'll, I'll just up. I'll go. Oh, sorry guys, I tried. And then, and then try to fix it up. Yeah, I usually crash the system by running too many reports at the same time. Because <laughs> I didn't know there were big reports. <laughs> um, but we upgraded our memory so that that hasn't happened in a while. But <laughs> In the beginning, I was doing that a lot. I have, sorry, now that I'm overthinking it, our library st staff, the item type is all. And so I guess I'll have to work with everybody else to see if that, because like our programs department, they'll check out books under their staff member account. Um, so I guess we'll just, in the end, I might have to do it library staff, ILL. And when those two are in effect, it'll take both of those into effect to allow the automatic renewal. Or just wait and see what this messes up. Well, I think if you limit it to library staff ILL, that's only going to hit things that are in that it's ILL not, item. You're type. right. Yeah, that wouldn't work. So okay. what, that, maybe the cleaner solution is a new patron category. Like we have an ILL patron category. So mm -hmm. anytime that we send stuff out to libraries outside of our consortium, we're using the ILL patron type. And then you can set rules specifically for that. Okay. I, that makes sense. Okay. I uh we also have uh ILL patron type because this way every time I send the uh, send anything out I don't have to I mean you you know you it recognizes all your categories so uh I don't know if you allow DVDs go uh, go to the library or reserve items go to the library yeah we we let them occasionally out but we don't allow uh renewals so this way you can set your uh your uh procedures and policies on more granular uh, and, and not to worry that somebody will automatically renew reserve book that you might need. Yeah. Yep. Nope. That makes sense. Okay, cool. Thank y'all. All right. Thank you for the question that I, um, we are, haven't totally gotten into ILL yet, but it's on our list of things that we might do one day. <laughs> That's very helpful information to know. Um, anybody else have questions about Koha? Okay. If not, I'm going to kind of end the meeting with, um, we're looking at changing the date and time um, of the meeting, I sent out a survey on um, the listserv. I'll put the link in the chat, maybe. There we go. Um, it's asking, we kind of were looking at the fourth Wednesday at 1.30 Eastern, 12.30 Central, 10.30 Pacific, and the second Monday at, so changing our time and changing our day. So in the meeting, is everyone okay if we move it to later in the day or do we need to keep it this early in the morning? The, 
uh, I feel like, well, sorry. Um, from three o'clock on, we have a whole bunch of kids come over. So I'm no good to anybody after three. Okay. Well, this would be one, this would be Before. for Texas would be 1230. So we, yeah, no, I, we did not want nothing later than 130 because okay, everyone cool. after, yeah. after, yeah, after three, your day gets gone from you and I run into if it's too much after three I get in a project and then forget that I had a meeting yeah um I don't do well with three o'clock four o'clock meetings I do 1 30 I can remember I eat lunch I get up I go yeah. you know it's kind of it and the half hour kind of gives you time to like finish up what you're doing and then because that was also one o'clock I'm like that's like right in the middle of my lunch um so is everyone okay if we meet at 1 30 and then right now the fourth Wednesday of the month has the most votes but we've only had three people vote so it's like one said the the they wanted the second Monday and then two said they wanted the fourth Wednesday. So we need more people. I just wait. voted right this second. Yeah. Me too. Yep. <laughs> to weigh in. This will affect next month's meeting time. So you will be is everyone here part of the circulation listserv Google group? If not, you need to join <laughs> the um, circulation listserv Google group thing um, on from the, uh, you can get to it from the SIG page on the COA US site um, because we will send out stuff about the meetings and things I won't send that out to I'll let everyone know the date before we um that we decide by the end of this month but then it will go out to everybody that the the um time has changed thank you so much uh, Jason for sharing the link on where people can sign up for the um listserv Okay. Yeah, and if you don't have a Google account, it might not let you. Um, so I would say just email Lauren if you can't yeah. get on with the link and she can manually add you to the group. Yeah. Right. Yes. And I but I think you can. I don't think you need a Gmail account. Though it's probably random. Well, I think our in the past we've noticed that like if you try and log in it it wants you to log in before you can subscribe um, okay. because it's a google group and not just a mailing list but you don't have to have that you can use it just as a mailing list you just have to get added on the back end manually and and then you don't have to um, use a google you don't have to interact with the group itself i signed myself up for it and now i can't post unless i post with a gmail account it won't let me post from my work account Right. So it's not going to let you interact with the web interface, but you can still post using the email address. So you can email circulation at coaus.org okay. and it should send it to the group, um, okay. regardless of being logged in or not. Thank you, Jason, for being our resident IT person <laughs> who knows all this stuff. All right. Does anything, anyone have thought of anything they need to discuss? All right, well then we're gonna end early. I'm gonna stop the recording.